All right, this is section 9.9, .9, right triangle trig ratios. It does not get any better than this, folks. Now, trigonometry is the study of triangles. That's right. That's why we have all these awesome triangles here. Now, if you were in class today, you would have seen these things popping up all over the place. It would have been cool. All right, a couple of important definitions. Here we've got our hypotenuse. You've heard of this one before, the hypotenuse. It's the one that's always across from the right angle, always across from the right angle. Now the next two, the adjacent and the opposite, these ones change based on which angle you're looking at. Now when we talk about angle theta, it's basically like you know using a variable. Theta is just another variable like x or y. <clears throat> so if we're talking about theta, then the side that's opposite it is this one over here. And the one that's adjacent, meaning next to that angle, is right here. Now if theta were over here, the opposite and adjacent would switch. So we have some super important trig ratios here and this does happen to spell out the awesome acronym so -ka. Toa. That's right. Now don't come to a test and say hey Mr. Allen how do you spell Sokotoa? That's the whole point. You need to remember how to spell it. That's what helps you out. So what we have here is for sine it's going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if I have sine of theta here, opposite over my hypotenuse. And we'll usually have some numbers over in these spots. For cosine, we have adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent, we have opposite over adjacent. This is very important to put down in your notes. So in these problems, we're asked to find the exact values of the following. Here we have sine of 60. Now, we're talking about right triangles. So let's draw a picture real quick because we love to draw pictures of triangles. And we know it's a right triangle. And we know one of the angles is 60. And if we know one of them is 60, the other has to be 30. Oh, yeah. Well, 30, 60, 90. We've seen this before. Across from the 30, we know we have a 1. Across from the 60, we have a root 3. And across from the right angle, we know it's 2. Now, if we're talking about the sine of 60, we're talking about this angle over here. We want to know opposite over hypotenuse, because we have soka toa. Sine is, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite side's over here. My hypotenuse is right here. So I'm going to have root 3 over 2. And there's my final answer. Let's do the same thing with cosine of 60. We can use the same triangle because it's going to be a 30, 60, 90 again. Cosine of 60, if we're looking here, now my adjacent is going to be important, which is over here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I set that up, I'm going to have 1 over 2. So 1 half. Likewise, if I did the sine of 30, my opposite side would now be over here with 1, my hypotenuse would still stay the same. So I'd have 1 over 2 now for my sine of 30. My cosine of 30, my adjacent would be here, the root 3. My hypotenuse would still stay the same, so I'd have root 3 over 2. So they basically would switch depending on which angle we're looking at. Let's go with our tangent. We have a different triangle here. We have a 45 degree angle. So we know that it's a 45, 45, 90. So I have 1, 1, root 2. And if I'm looking for my opposite over adjacent, because I know that's what I have for my tangent ratio, my opposite of the 45 degree angle, it really doesn't matter on this one which angle I pick, but as long as it's 45 degrees, my opposite's over here, my adjacent's here, I'm going to have 1 over 1, which would be 1. Let's make sure we simplify that. So that would be our correct answer there. So in this example, we're asked to find BC first, and that's going to help us solve for the rest of them. Well, if I know two of the sides, I can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what BC is. So after doing the Pythagorean theorem, I get B squared equals 24, so i got to square root both, and I get B equals the square root of 24. If I simplify that, that would break down to 4 and 6, and I get 2 root 6. So BC is 2 root 6. That's important because I'm going to need that when I'm trying to find the tangent of B. So I'm looking at the tangent of B, that's my angle, my opposite side's over here, my adjacent side is right here. Those are the ones that are important for tangent. So I'm going to have 5 over 2 root 6. Now we know that you can't leave a radical in the denominator because some old dude told us we can't way back in the day and now we have to simplify it all the time. Really there's no other reason that I can think of. So we end up with 5 root 6 over... And root 6 times root 6 is going to give me square six. root. Very good. 6. Awesome. Yes. 
And we have 6 times 2, which is 12. There's my final answer. Remember, you get square root of 36, which equals 6. So we get 5 root 6 over 12. Awesome. Next one. Cosine of angle A. I'm going to do this one in blue here. So my cosine sides that I want to use would be my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So my adjacent's over here with the 5. My hypotenuse is over here. Notice how the opposite and adjacent have changed, which one we're looking at based on the angle we're using. So I'm going to have 5 over 7. And there's my final answer. I don't have to do any kind of rationalizing or simplifying with that one. It's good to go. Here's an interesting little twist, if you will. I know that the tangent of angle N is 5 over 12, but I want to find the sine of angle N. Hmm, this is interesting. Why well, don't I just start with drawing a right triangle because I love drawing right triangles and it's awesome. It ain't so, wrong. It ain't wrong because it's right. Oh, snap. Let's say this is angle N. So I know that the opposite side is 5 and the adjacent side is 12 because it's opposite over adjacent for tangent. Well, I have a 5, 12, 13 triangle because it's a triple. What's up? Now I want to find the sine of angle N. So we're looking at angle N here. We want to find the sine of angle N. And that's going to be my opposite over my hypotenuse. So I have 5 over 13. Holla! All right, time to change it up again. We know that 24 over 25 is the sine of what angle? We need to figure out what angle it is the sine of. Well, if I'm talking about my opposite, if I look at B, the opposite there is CA, and that's not 24 or 25. But if I look at the opposite of A, boom, that's 24. That's good. And the hypotenuse is 25, so it's going to be the sine of angle A, because my opposite side would be here, and my hypotenuse would be right here, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, now I want the tangent of one of the angles to be 7 over 24. Well, I don't see a 7 on here, but wait... You might, if you write it in here, we have a 7, 24, 25 right triangle. Now, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, my opposite of angle B is this one here. That's good, because I wanted it to be 7. So if I look at my opposite of angle B and my adjacent to angle B, I would have 7 over 24, which is exactly what I want, so it's going to be angle B. Sweet. That's so cool. Last example, folks. Time for the home stretch. Let's do this. We know that the tangent of B is 8 over 15. We want to find out what BC is. We're looking to find out this bad boy right here. Well, I don't see an 8 or a 15, but we're told that this is B here, and opposite would be 8, and the adjacent would then be 15, right? Because it's opposite over adjacent for my tangent ratio. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking here because I'm super smart and I'm always thinking of things. Always thinking. Always thinking. 8 times 2 gives me 16, right? What if I did 15 times 2? That would give me 30. So I know now that BC or CB is 30. Awesome. That was so cool. So darn cool. Anyone know what AB would be? Because that's fun. You can always try to see if, you know, do a little extra math. Let's do some extra math. AB, hmm. I have a 8, 15, 17 triangle doubled. So I'm going to have 34. Don't forget to bring your calculators with trig functions tomorrow, meaning the ones that say sine, cosine, or tangent on it. We're going to need them. If you don't have them, you're going to be lost, and then you're going to cry, and I can't really, you know, help you out if you're crying in my class. Use your homework. Boom. Test is not Friday. We'll talk about when the test is. You know, we always have these snow days and things like that, so who knows what day it's going to fall on this year or next year even or the year after. It's always going to change. You know, and then we're going to move the school days and who knows. So just disregard that whole thing right there. We'll talk about it in class.